Hey dental fans. So hopefully you guys watched my what is a monodon bridge video. So in this video is I'm going to show you the steps I take to make a monodon bridge. This is the patient, call him Buster, an homage to uh, Buster the crash test dummy on uh, Mythbusters. And I removed his upper left lateral incisor. And this is what I'm gonna, this is uh, what I'm gonna use to make the monodon bridge. I'm gonna take impressions of this. So basically it's gonna consist of, I gotta take an impression of his upper teeth, impression of the lower teeth, and then what's called a bite registration that just shows the lab how the teeth fit together. Uh, and the beauty of uh, working on a, you know, filming on a typodon rather than on a live person is that uh, just undo a couple springs in the back and the two jaws come apart. So I can, you know, more easily take a mold of his upper teeth, take a mold of the lower teeth. All right, so for these molds, I'm gonna use stock impression trays. Uh, this is just medium sizes, a medium upper tray and a medium lower tray. Let's just try them in, make sure they fit. Yes, they do. And the lower one, let's try that in. That fits well as well. Okay, so for the upper mold, since this is where the uh, monodon bridge is gonna be, I'm going to use a material called uh, vinyl polysiloxane. It's a rubber material that uh, is gonna give me better accuracy than a very stable model. All right, so it just comes in this dispensing gun. Just fill up the tray. It's almost like I'm caulking. Years ago, we had to mix this uh, by hand. It came in tubes. I had to mix it up on a piece of plastic paper with a spatula and then put it in the tray. Now with the guns, it's much simpler few more years and we're just going to be using digital scanners most likely. Okay, so once I have the material in the tray, let's take, take the mold. Okay, just got to let that set up. Make sure I get the front teeth. And that takes about two minutes to set. I'm just going to set that aside. All right, materials set up. So let's just celebrate, separate the mold. Ah, there we go. All right, and there you can see where the hole was. And this will go off to the lab. Next, we'll take a mold of the lower jaw. Again, I'm gonna use a stock tray, and this time I'm gonna use a material called alginate. Uh, it's for, just for the, op, for the opposing model. It's not quite as accurate as the vinyl, the VPS material, but it's accurate enough for an opposing model. Uh, so let me go mix that up next. So the alginate material is just a powder that you mix up. You know, this is a pre-measured uh, amount of water that goes with the three scoops of powder that I have in here. Add the water to the powder. Just mix it up. Get it nice and creamy. Make sure all the powder is incorporated into the mix. Smush it against the edge of the bowl also to force any air bubbles out of the mix. Okay, once it's mixed, then I'll just load it up onto my spatula. Load the impression tray. And get a little bit more material. Okay. And then we take the mold of the lower teeth. And again, we just give that a couple minutes to set up. Okay, so the material is set up now. So again, just separate, take the impression out. 
And there we have the impression of the lower teeth. So uh, for this, for the for this, so for this mold, though, I am going to pour this up in plaster before I send the impression out uh, to you know before and make a uh, mold of it so that I can send it out to the lab because the lab in this case is out in the Midwest, so I got to FedEx it to him. So this uh, alginate material won't last uh, a couple days it takes to get uh, for FedEx to get it to the lab. So I'm going to make a uh, plaster model using this impression. All right, last thing that we got to do is take a bite registration. So basically, I'm just going to squirt some material uh, called blue mousse. Comes in the comes in the uh, cartridge again. Uh, this is similar to that first impression material, except it's a lot stiffer. So I take it and I just run a bead of the blue mousse across the biting surfaces of all the teeth. And then we just have Buster close down, bite down into it. The blue mousse takes about a minute to set. Okay, so it's been a minute. The blue mousse is set up. Let's have Buster open. There we go. And now we have the bite registration that shows the lab how the teeth will fit together. So when they have both models for the, the model of the upper arch and model of the lower arch, uh, they can put them together correctly and mount them on a hinge, similar to what's here. Uh, we'll also pick a color for the missing tooth. Uh, since these are just plastic teeth, the lab's not going to be able to match them exactly uh, since they're used to matching human teeth. So if this was an actual live person, we'd match the teeth. I would take uh, multiple photographs too, both of the teeth on either side. Uh, take some smiles, smile photographs so they know how much of the tooth shows. And uh, also take some photographs with the shade tabs next to the teeth. But since this is just Buster, I'm not going to worry about that. Actually, I changed my mind. I am going to take a shade uh, for Buster. And checking my shade guide, actually the Typodont teeth, the plastic teeth, are pretty light colored, so I'm going to need to use my bleach shade guide. I don't know if that comes up on the uh, thing. So these are really, really light. And of the four, let's see, we got the bright, you know, the lightest. That might be a little too light. Let's see, number two, eh, that's a little bit better. They're all a little grayer, though, than these fake teeth. Three. And that's four. Which color do you like? I think I'm going to go with number one, the brightest one. Eh, maybe not. Let's go with number two. Let's go with number two. Not an exact match, but uh, it's for a type of don. It's for a model. It's for a video. It's for YouTube. All right. So I got the package back from the dental lab. I used Dental Arts Lab uh, in Illinois. Uh, and I sent them the impressions, uh, the upper impression we took last time, the bite registration, and also I made a study model of with the lower alginate that I took last time, and I sent it to them, and they sent me back the case. So let's open it up and take a look. All right, in here inside, let's see what we got here. Okay, first thing is just a yeah, another FedEx Express. Uh, Shipping labels for the next case I send them. Put that to the side. Next thing is in here is the, it's actually a, a burr for the, uh, for the dental drill. This is like a uh, particular shape uh, that they want you to use to make the, to drill out the preps for the monodont bridge and, and explains a little bit how to do it. Uh, so it's always good to have because it's this shape. It's an inverted cone, not uh, inverted cone diamond. Uh, not everybody uses them. Not everybody keeps them in stock. Okay, so I put that off to the side, not lose it. Next step is the invoice. So I actually not sponsored by DA uh, Dental Arts Lab. I actually paid for this. Okay, put that aside so I can pay the bill. Yeah, it's got some styrofoam egg crate type of packaging. And inside, let's see, we got the models wrapped in bubble wrap. And then a bag 
containing the upper impression that I took and the bite registration and a little box that holds the bridge. And just more egg crate foam on the bottom of the box. Let me put the box off to the side. So this is the upper model. This is the model that they made. Let me just take everything out of the bags. Put the bags aside. Del Arts lab bag. So this is the upper model that they made. This model they made based off of this impression that I sent. So again, took this earlier. Uh, if you, you can rewind and see how I made that, or if you're watching my unboxing video, check out my steps in making a monodont bridge video. All right, and then this was the lower model uh, that I poured up uh, uh, from that alginate impression that I took. So this I poured up in my office and I uh, sent it to them. And then they mounted it, you know, nice plaster bases, even labeled it, my last name and that it's for a typodont. And then this is the bite registration I took and this showed them how, to, how the teeth fit together. So that's what these black plastics are. This is just actually a really inexpensive, disposable articulator that they use. Let me just snap that together. And they use the bite registration to mount the case. So they put the two molds together with the bright registration in between. Uh, then they would add uh, add uh, the hinge. They actually just cut a slot into the uh, plaster bases and this just glues in there. And so now we have a simple hinge articulator. Doesn't, comp doesn't exactly replicate the movement of the jaw, but for the purposes in this, uh, for what we're doing, uh, it's close enough. And then on a patient, we refine the bite by actually having the patient move their jaw around. Okay. So we got that. And then here's the box that has the little bridge embossed with their logo. And inside we got a little piece of foam. And here's the monodont bridge and in a clear plastic prep guide. So if you look close onto the model, you can see where they prepped it. They, they uh, basically drilled little holes in the teeth on either side. They pop the bridge out of the plastic model. And in the monodont, it's got these metal wings and that's what locks into those teeth. So fits in very snugly and there you can see what it would look like on the model. Okay, so I got the monodont bridge back from the lab. It includes this handy dandy little prep guide and the bridge itself. So first, and in addition to the bridge and the prep guide, it also included a special burr. It's an inverted cone diamond that uh, Dental Arts Lab recommends we use to uh, make the preps for the bridge. So let me put the burr in my hand piece, pop that out, hard plastic, get the burr out of, there it is. Finally, I got my high speed, just using an air driven hand piece. Let me just tighten that. Okay, so first thing you do, you take the prep guide, seat it on the patient. And then those two little holes that are in the prep guide, that's where you just make little dimples on the teeth. And what that does, that just marks the spots on the teeth where the bridge is gonna sit. Ah, the smell of burning ivory. That so brings me back to dental school. Uh, the teeth, 
Buster's teeth are made out of uh, a type of plastic called ivorine, and it's got a very uh, interesting smell when you're drilling it. Okay, so again, following the instru prep instructions, uh, they recommend you first dot the teeth and then come at, in at the teeth sideways to make preps for the bridge. So we have our one dot there. Let's see if I can get this on camera. And just enlarge the hole a little bit. First one tooth, and let's see, then we do it on the other tooth. Got to be careful because you can burn the plastic is with the drill. As you can see, what happened there it turned rather dark. That doesn't happen with with uh, teeth. All right, and now let's try in the monodon bridge. See if it fits. Nope, not quite. I need to make this. I need to make the preps a little bit bigger still. Right in again. Almost there. What you can do as well is take the uh, prep guide and it should fit properly. If it's not, yeah, if the tooth is in the correct spot. Almost there. I just got to widen it a hair more. And it's like most things. It's like most things. You want to uh, check twice, you know, measure twice, cut once. So uh, I only remove a little bit of tooth material at a time to make sure I'm not overdoing it. Even if you do make the preps a little bit too big, it's not the end of the world since uh, it's going to be filled in with uh, composite that you're going to bond the bridge in. Almost there. Uh, I think I just need to make the canine pre a tiny bit deeper so that it sits properly. Let's check the guide. Yeah, I think it needs a tiny bit more. The tooth's a little twisted. And check one more time. And there we go. I think we got it in spot, in place. A tiny bit more, maybe. Spoke too soon. Okay, there we go. Got it in place. So at this point in time, I'll give the patient a mirror. I'll sit the patient up, give them a mirror, have them double check, make sure we pick the right color. They like the shape, they like how everything looks. Because if you need to change anything, now's the time to do it. Uh, once the patient gives us the go ahead, that's all good. Now we're ready to bond. Okay, so now we're ready to bond the bridge in. So. On a patient, I would isolate it, put some cotton around it, maybe even put a rubber dam around these teeth or the iso, uh, isolite, make sure it's nice and dry. And uh, then I apply my bonding agent. So I use a bonding agent called Surpass, made by uh, Vista Apex. Uh, it's a three bottle system. So first step is bottle number one, which is basically the etchant. Uh, paint that on for about 10 seconds onto each tooth. 
Then onto each tooth, add two coats of number two, which is the primer. It neutralizes the etching. Once that's on there, then I just air dry it with my syringe. Dry it out really, really well. And then the last step I use is the bonding agent. Uh, this is the actual glue, if you will. Put a coat of that on there. And then I'll thin it a little bit. And now with the uh, Surpass 3, I will zap it with my curing light, just a blue light, set it up. Once it's set up, you know, I'll use some flowable composite. I use uh, Titan. The brand I use is called Titan, again, made by Vista Apex. Put a little bit in each prep. Take the monodont bridge, set it in place. Put the uh, prep guide over it just to make sure the bridge is in the correct spot. And then I'll zap it with my light again for another 10 seconds. So now the bridge is pretty much, it's glued into place, but still have to fill in uh, the preps. So for that, I'm gonna use heart or firmer composite. I use uh, Vital Essence by Ultradent. And this, I just cover up the holes, smooth it. Once it's set up, once it's in there, zap it with the light again. And now it's in there. And now I'll have the patient, uh, I'll check the patient's bite, make any adjustments that I need to. And same thing. And then once it's, you know, I grind down the bite, polish it up, and then that's it. And then the patient can go home and wear it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please hit the subscribe button if you like watching, learning more about dentistry and teeth. I try to come up, I uh, post new videos weekly. So see you next time, guys. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.